So now we're at lesson three. It's all very easy so far. All we've been doing is downloading and installing. In this lesson, it's not going to be much more complicated. We're just going to have a look at the home screen. So I just want to take this opportunity to mention that I'm the head of uh, the Centre for Digital Production at Rose Bruford College. It's one of, one of my many hats. And I just wanted to mention it because Rose Bruford is supporting the use of these videos and the application of them. Um, the, uh, the fact they're free is because Rose Bruford College is a university that wants to support the lighting and theatre community. We have students who use WYSIWYG regularly, um, some of the best people using WYSIWYG out in the industry, particularly in the UK, uh, were trained at Rose Bruford College. So these training videos are as much for them as it is for, for the wider community. We really like to get your feedback on how these training videos work so that we can make new ones. Uh, it's something we'd like to do is to create a whole suite of different training videos on all sorts of programs that, that we can deliver to the, to the community for free so that we can support you. So if you have any suggestions, please contact me at uh, Rose Bruford. My email address is james.simpson1 at bruford.ac.uk. Uh, let us know what you think and um, any ideas you have for future training videos. Particularly, I'd like to know any of your, your issues of WYSIWYG. If you want a little tip or trick, something that maybe you don't know how to figure out yourself, I'd be more than happy to knock up a video, publish it on my site for you. So lesson three, uh, WYSIWYG home screen. Now I'm gonna take you through this uh, Really, really basic stuff. I'm sorry if it's if it's uh, really obvious to you, but so there's two ways of opening WYSIWYG. You can double click on an actual WYSIWYG file that may be sitting in a documents library somewhere and it will open straight into the WYSIWYG editor. The other way is by double clicking on the icon. You can also access it from the start menu. And when it opens, it takes you to the home screen. So when we're in the home screen, there's a few things to check. First of all, the release. Let's check what release we have. We've got R41. So just to explain how the releases work, you can open anything from a previous file. I mean, I've got uh, files going back as far as release 11. Uh, I can open them in R41 without a problem, but they aren't forward compatible. So I can't open R41 files in R40. I have to back save them. And you can back save um, back about you know, seven or eight versions or so, but I, I couldn't open an R41 file on an R20, for instance. So uh, it's important to stay to stay current with your software, um, but the great thing about WYSIWYG is that you can always open uh, files that you know, have existed for a very long time, which, which is a really nice feature of WYSIWYG. There's actually not a lot in here that you really need to know about. Um, we're gonna cover how to import all of these objects actually in the editor itself. Um, there's no real reason for me, in my mind, why you'd have, have these here. Same for templates. Um, you can import templates from, uh, from the WYSIWYG uh, sort of editor directly. You've got options here to, uh, to look at your dongle, so you can do upgrades and renewals if you need to get to those wizards. Uh, the members only area takes you straight to the, the, uh, the web page that we were just looking at. Uh, there's a few handy things like references and um, how to import user data, I, it's, I've never used any of those things, I'm not going to cover those. Um, creating new conventionals, I don't know why you'd need one of those because they've got such a vast library of every picture ever made. Um, it, if, you, if you need to do something like that, then you probably uh, you probably know more about WYSIWYG than I do and you, and you have specialist help to help you do it. No, the two things we really need to look at here is creating a new document and opening an existing one. So opening an existing one, you know, if we open this, it'll take us to our Windows library and we just navigate through Windows Explorer like normal, find the file, click on it and it'll open. Or we can see the latest versions we've used here. Or we can create a new file or project. Now the difference between a file and a project is that a file would exist inside a project. Uh, project's a new thing that's come out quite recently where the entire um, uh, reference library for that, uh, that file that you're working on will all be saved in one place. So all the images, all of the uh, custom fixtures and things you've made will all exist inside a project folder. Which is, uh, which is built for you automatically. Um, and we will do some of that later, but first of all, we're just going to create a file. So if I click File New, it will take me to the, uh, the main interface, and that will take us on to Chapter 2.